I'm explaining a film from 2021 titled Without Remorse. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. U.S. Navy SEALs begin a mission to free a CIA operative held by the Syrian army. After their successful rescue, team leader John Kelly realizes they're not in Syria but in Russia instead. Realizing their mistake, they quickly come up with a strategy to get out of there. Unfortunately, as they descend, they encounter an unprovoked attack from a troop brandishing an RPG, which causes a hole in the floor to open and sends the entire squad tumbling to the ground. Kelly quickly launched a counterattack, but Robert, one of the mission's CIA agents, focused on freeing the captive. Kelly and his remaining crew, together with Robert and the freed prisoners, hastily headed to the waiting chopper after taking out all of the enemy soldiers. Kelly expressed his disgust, saying he thought Robert had planned an ambush on the Russian army post. Robert, however, adamantly denied knowing or intending to mislead. Fast forward three months, Kelly, having retired from the military, enjoys family time with his pregnant wife, Pam. During a visit to a friend's house, Kelly shares his recent role as a security guard. While all of this is going on, one of Kelly's teammates is in Syria conducting a hostage rescue mission and is enjoying time with his own family. Sadly, he was hit by a fast automobile as he goes outside to take out the garbage. Later, a shadowy organization methodically hunted down and murdered every one of Kelly's allies who had been engaged in a clandestine operation in Syria. One night, while Kelly and his spouse were getting ready for bed in their upstairs bedroom, Kelly became restless and went downstairs for a midnight snack and some music. Suddenly the home was dark, and trespassers broke in and moved toward their bedroom. In a swift and targeted attack, the assailants fired directly at the bed where Pam lay in deep slumber. Reacting to the disturbance from above, Kelly hastened to retrieve his firearm, spotting a shadowy figure whom he promptly shot. Despite managing to neutralize several intruders, Kelly sustained severe gunshot wounds. Luckily, one attacker ran out of ammo and decided not to try again, leaving Kelly's house. Kelly was hospitalized the next day, recovering from a serious gunshot wound. CIA officials and SEALs came together for a momentous gathering that followed the event. Robert recapped what happened in this meeting regarding Kelly's team's objective to free the hostage. Afterwards, everyone decided to start looking into the situation. When Kelly came to in the hospital, he was overcome with grief upon discovering that his wife and unborn child had perished horribly. Upon receiving a visit from Karen, his erstwhile SEAL supervisor, Kelly begged her to reveal the identity of those who had attacked him. Regrettably, Karen informed him that the case was under investigation, and she remained unaware of the perpetrators. A few days later, Karen found herself summoned to an exclusive meeting in Washington, D.C., attended by Robert and Secretary of Defense Thomas Clay. It was during this private meeting when Robert disclosed the attackers, Russian troops connected to the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation, were the ones who killed Kelly's wife. They were said to have acted in reprisal for the Kelly team's attack on the FSB headquarters in Aleppo, Syria. Complicating matters, the U.S. decided not to escalate relations with Russia and instead planned to shut the case. However, Karen struggled to come to terms with the choice. Kelly gradually persisted in his intense training regimen with the goal of regaining his physical health. After the investigation was concluded, Karen contacted him one day and revealed that the attack was carried out by Russian forces. Concerned for Kelly, Karen handed over files and photos, linking a passport forger named Andre to the Russian army's infiltration into America. It seemed likely that Andre held crucial information about the mastermind behind the attack. That evening, following a training session, Kelly returned home, immersing himself in alcohol. Subsequently, he made his way to Andre's office. Kelly confronted two of Andre's bodyguards while feigning intoxication. Kelly quickly made his way back to his own car after witnessing Andre get into his. Kelly chased after Andre and used a calculated hit to wedge his vehicle between a sedan and a truck so he couldn't get out. Kelly took advantage of the circumstance to burn Andre's car on fire and then confronted him at gunpoint, demanding to know who planned the attack on him and his wife's untimely death. Andre refused to give over the information, so Kelly shot him in the leg to get through to him. He eventually revealed just one name, Viktor Rykov. Political analysts speculated that Andre's attack may spark a new Cold War as tensions between the US and Russia increased I in the wake of these developments, Karen paid a visit to Kelly, now held in prison following the altercation with Andre. During their meeting, 
Kelly asserted his determination to locate and eliminate the assassin, regardless of his whereabouts. Shortly after Kelly's return to his prison cell, he faced forced removal by several prison officers. Defying their orders, Kelly engaged in a barehanded struggle against them. The cops were overpowered and only gave up when Kelly kidnapped one of them, forcing them to slowly leave the jail. Then Clay dispatched a courier to invite Kelly to come to an office where he was supposed to identify pictures and verify the name that Andre had given him. Robert disclosed Viktor Rykov's identity and said that he was a Russian spy who had previously served as a Spetsnaz officer and had been a longtime target of the CIA. Intelligence indicates that Rykov is presently a resident of Murmansk, Russia. Encouraged by the fact that the man who killed his wife was still alive, Kelly promised to help capture Rykov by suggesting that he be turned over to the CIA. Initially reluctant, Clay consented, stipulating that Kelly must return to prison once the mission reached completion. Kelly, alongside Karen and the CIA team, readies for departure on a plane bound for Russia. After a few hours in flight, as they approach Russian territory, Kelly gears up for a parachute jump. Abruptly, Russian fighters launch an attack on their aircraft, setting its wings on fire. The turmoil that follows causes the plane to descend quickly, finally plunging into the cold waters of the Barents Sea. Water begins to seep into the cabin as a result of the crash, but Kelly and the team manage to escape and survive the experience. They make their way toward the Russian border on a Zodiac boat and take cover in a safe place. Kelly says they are lucky that their jet was attacked since the Russians are probably thinking they are dead. But Kelly starts to lose faith in Robert because he didn't go with them. The possibility that Robert deceived them and revealed their arrival to the Russians, takes root in Kelly's mind. Upon their eventual reunion in Murmansk, where Robert is socializing with Russians, an enraged Kelly confronts him, accusing him of treason as a potential informant for the Russians. Robert rebuffs Kelly's allegations, asserting that he was in Murmansk after learning of the attack on the plane carrying Kelly. Kelly finds Victor living in an apartment in the city and, thinking his crew is dead, goes out to kill him with two assassins. Robert fervently maintains his innocence and makes a sworn declaration that he is not a traitor, finally, Kelly begins to trust him. Victor is strangely waiting for Kelly, Karen, and the others when they attack his lair in the evening. They are shocked to find Victor sitting, holding a bomb trigger, and wearing a suicide vest. According to him, Kelly and his group are just American pawns trying to provoke a conflict with Russia. Pawns such as this are disposable in the King's Chase, Victor says. Victor sets off the bomb, destroying the room after making his menacing declaration. A swift check confirms the survival of the team, but a sniper takes aim, resulting in the death of one team member. The sniper extends the casualties by killing two Russian policemen on patrol outside, ensuring that Kelly and the team will be blamed for their deaths. Under relentless sniper fire, they seek refuge in the darkened remnants of Victor's apartment. In a daring move, Kelly maneuvers through a breached wall, pinpointing the sniper's location. They eventually manage to take out the sniper. Unfortunately, Russian military and police surrounded the residential building. Leading by example, Kelly told his group to flee down the back alley as he engaged the pursuing soldiers. Kelly made the audacious decision to throw explosives at parked automobiles in order to provide a distraction, which let Karen and her group escape. The Russian troops and Kelly continued their fierce combat. Kelly, strategically positioned on the bottom level, detonated an explosive that severely wounded the Russian soldiers. Kelly saw his chance, threw on a Russian army outfit, covered his face with a tear gas mask, and limped up to a waiting automobile. He ran to the meeting place with his group, escaping the encirclement by the Russian troops. The subsequent day found Kelly, nursing injuries, almost losing consciousness while driving. Fortunately, he reached the team's gathering spot. Without delay, the entire team, including Robert, departed Russia by ship, reflecting on Victor's ominous words about being pawns in fulfilling the king's wishes. Robert proposed a plan, Kelly should stage his death to pursue the elusive mastermind behind these events. In Washington, Kelly bravely abducted Clay from a restaurant bathroom in an attempt to solve the riddles that had bewildered them all. Kelly then questioned Clay, using the threat of going after his family as payback for all the hardships he had gone through. At some point, Clay revealed why he had sent Kelly on the assignment. In an attempt to supposedly boost the economy and assert control, the United States sought to provoke confrontation with Russia, instilling panic around the globe. 
Kelly and his group were only puppets in Clay's strategy to unite the American people against a common foe, Russia. These revelations fueled Kelly's fury. In a fit of rage, he submerged his car into the Potomac River, ensuring Clay's demise within. A few days later, Clay's death was officially declared a suicide, and a military ceremony laid him to rest. Concurrently, Kelly, who was pronounced dead during his alleged voyage to Russia, found a last resting place next to his wife's tomb, so avoiding a prison term. At the end of the movie, Robert gives the president the voice recording that implicates Kelly, which was made right before her deed. Kelly leaves America to start a new life and take on a new identity with Karen's help. The moving theme of the movie emphasizes how willing military members are to make sacrifices for their nation. Yet, it also highlights the bitter truth that their sacrifices can be in vain when individuals exploit their positions and power for personal gain. If you enjoyed, do subscribe, like and comment if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.